Welcome to the Orange Next podcast series. Welcome to a new episode of the Orange Next podcast series. Uh, my name is John Coat, and I will be your presenter for today. I will host this series, and today we're going to talk about more about Azure Cognitive Search. And I will not doing this alone. I have uh, two guests with me, uh, starting with uh, Liam. Can you uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on the podcast, John. My name's uh, Liam Kavanaugh. I am a program manager at Microsoft. I work in the Azure Cognitive Search engineering team, and I get to work with a lot of great partners like yourself on helping to build advanced search applications. So great to be here. My pleasure. Great to be here. And Mana, can you introduce yourself as well? Uh, thanks, John. My name is Man. I'm a data scientist at Orange Next and also the internal product owner for our cognitive search solution, meaning I'm coordinating the team with product development and leading them during implementations. Very good. Thank you both for being here. And uh, before we dive, deep dive a little bit more in, uh, in the details, uh, let's start with just a, a, a small question to you, uh, Liam. So mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit more about Azure Cognitive Search. Can you elaborate more about uh, the heritage and how it is started? Sure, absolutely. So we started this service a little over five years ago, and we started it because we started seeing a trend in Azure uh, where people were starting to try to do more with their data. And search was one primary area where they wanted to be able to do that. They wanted to let their users search through that content and be able to find it in more of a you know, a Google-like way where they could search the content and, and bring it back. And so we started seeing a trend where people started using technologies such as uh, Solar, uh, Elasticsearch, uh, very, very powerful open source technologies. Um, but the feedback that we got from those users was that although the technology was very powerful, when they started to get into any real type of, you know, content size, um, query load, they can be often very challenging to manage. And unless you're a search expert, it can be very hard to, to do. So we wanted to try to see if we could create a platform, a uh, platform as a service, sometimes called a search as a service, where we could let people have those types of search capabilities, but not have to deal with the management um, aspects of it so that we help them make sure that they can scale it up, scale it down um, using our, our cloud services. We want to make it so that, you know, if there are those weird things like shard corruption or split brain or whatever can happen in search, you don't need to deal with it. That's something that we can take on for you. So as a developer platform, we want to make it easy for developers to build that experience and then also see if there's things that we could add on top. So obviously Microsoft being doing a lot in AI, we have Bing for search. There's a lot of great things that we believe we could add in value. And that's the heritage, and that, that's really what we've been trying to do with the service. Got it, got it. Great, great. So and another follow-up question that I that I have in my mind is like, uh, why does organization need to care about this new technology? Uh, are there typical use cases you see in market? And how does this differ to other technology you see in the market as well? So three questions. What, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, very very good question because certainly when you look at search there's all kinds of various different types of scenarios that we, we see for us um, when we first started we started from a place where people wanted to be able to search through their structured data uh, we sometimes call it a catalog search sometimes people call it app search but it's basically the idea that say you have your information in the database like uh, sql uh, or no sql database and you wanted to search through it Maybe you're creating a, a real estate um, site so the users can search for homes or a used car marketplace, or even an internal line of business application where you're searching over your, your SQL data in more of a full text way. That's where we started, but we saw an interesting trend where what happened is that it wasn't just uh, structured data. We we're all of a sudden seeing organizations were creating so much content uh, what we call unstructured, but it basically files such as PDFs, office documents, you, you name it, different types of content. And the interesting thing about that is that people wanted to have a really great search over that type of content, which can be sitting in all kinds of different places. But the problem was, is that 
as I said, it's unstructured. It's just a block of text, right? So how do you build out a great search experience? And so that's where we started um, to extend so that not only could you search through the structured data, but we could also start to let people do more advanced search over this unstructured information. And that's where I think, you know, our partnership has been so great because, you know, as we started to extend to be able to have the platform to search this unstructured information, try to bring out some interesting information from that, those files, having the digital next search solution to build on top of that and just provide that a, an amazing experience and provide more advanced um, industry centric capabilities, I think is a perfect fit. And so that's kind of where we've come to and we're continu continuing to try to progress in that area. Great, great. Good answer though. Uh, so uh, seeing where Microsoft is uh, coming from and uh, how we envision the future of search, uh, I'm curious about you, uh, Mane. Uh, are there any technical challenges customers are facing? Uh, and can you link that to Liam, Liam's story about the platform and the technology how Microsoft provides? So my first question to you, Mane, is basically, uh, why did Oris Next partner with Microsoft to build this uh, new product called Digital Next Search? Uh, and that uses the Azure Cognitive Search technology. Yeah, sure, I can elaborate upon that. Well, there are multiple reasons. Uh, we didn't want just any plug and play search engine that did exactly what we wanted it to do out of the box because we're also very conscious of the fact that this is practically impossible. There's so many domains, so many use cases. Anyone that provides this technology as a platform will never be able to catch everything that you want to offer to the customer. So the first thing we wanted is a platform that's open, that has a solid base, but also facilitates and encourages customization. And for us, that's what Cognitive Search did. We have this whole mechanism around adding your own functionality to how documents are indexed, how they are processed, and you can manipulate it to your heart's content. You can also make it interact with anything that is provided out of the box. The other thing is that there's when you implement a search solution, there's a bunch of additional challenges you have to face. There's where does the data come from? You have to make it available to the search engine. Sometimes it comes in such a format that it's unusable until you manipulate it correctly. It also has to end up somewhere. It has to interact with an interface. Some extra external mechanisms might feed into that. And all of this extra infrastructure is also what we can solve within Azure. So everything can interact with each other, often natively making things a hell of a lot easier for us. And the last thing is that what we want as well is to have a good relationship with the content provider because we want to focus on things that we can add to the product rather than having to continuously guess at what, what is the content provider making? Will they replace what we have within the next half a year because they see the need for it as well? So we want to have a conversation ongoing that we know where the platform as a generic component is heading so we can focus on what we can add to it. And for us, Microsoft ticked all of those boxes. We as Orange Next and ICT Group as well had a good relationship with them, which has only evolved when, uh, during this period. So yeah, happy. That's cool, man. But uh, how can you meet the expectation of the customer? I mean, how do you make sure uh, help them evolve their search behavior and how uh, does this new technology help them do that? Can you elaborate on this? Yeah, sure. So there's a few components to this once again. On the one hand, what we can do with Azure Cognitive Search is the, the customer situation is that they have, they have a bunch of information. It can be documents from different types. So they have some structured information as well, supporting it, legacy documents that they have to scan. And all of this information within the customer's data infrastructure is typically segregated. It's siloed to different authentication mechanisms. The ways to interact with this data is usually also very different. People have to learn a bunch of different systems, how they work, what they can search for to find their information. And usually not much is done with the actual content of the information, and also trying to relate it internally. So with Azure Cognitive Search, the first thing we do is we unify this. We make sure everything is in the same place, and then we can process the content of these files and enhance it with the information that was already present in the source system, so we preserve that. Yeah. And then we can data mine all of this unstructured and structured information and enrich all the information that's there through NLP, which natural language processing through AI models that we then unleash upon the content. 
An additional thing we can do is not only use the information within the documents within the records, but anything we find there, and there is extra information for it available within the company, which we call external enrichment, we can also add as extra information. An example would be, for example, if we, um, if we find a vessel designation or a machine type number within a document, within the customer's databases, we can look up this particular machine and add, okay, where is this situated? Who built this? Who designed it? How much service does it typically need? What's the capacity. All of this we can add to the document to shorten the journey people have to go through when they want their information and create more ways to internally relate things. And the last thing is what also makes Azure Search very flexible is that we can tailor this process to the content type. So we don't have to design a one size fits all recipe that goes through everything. We can make this skill set design, this recipe for what we do with the content for every type of content we, we specify. So this goes for these SharePoint documents, for example, and this particular folder with that product information is this recipe. Anything that comes from SQL goes through here. So we can really tailor it to the domain, to the use case and to the requirements of the customer. Yeah, great insights, um, uh, thanks for that. Uh, so, so Liam, if you hear all those questions from, from Mana, uh, how does this fit into the uh, uh, Azure Cognitive Search uh, roadmap uh, and, and vision of Microsoft? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's pretty closely aligned. One, one of the things I thought of as, as, as you're going through that um, was that we're, we're seeing a trend in the industry where searches is, is evolving from more what I would call a linguistic approach to more of an AI approach. And, and to give you an example of that, um, traditional search has always been using words or variations of words. So run, run, or running, you know, understanding variations of that. Sometimes it can know that, you know, mouse is the same thing as, as mice. So, you know, uh, it's called lemmatization. So, but it's all very much based on linguistics, different forms of words. But what's interesting is that when you're, when you're searching through content and document as, as if you're saying searching through SharePoint information, there's all kinds of different variations to these. Uh, there's all kinds of different ways that people talk about it. There's a different intent as to what I'm trying to achieve. And AI really helps. Um, one example I was just uh, working on just a couple of days ago was with uh, healthcare, um, where you know you're searching, they're searching through um, coronavirus research and you know they wanted to ask about things such as hemorrhagic fever and if you look at that in here in the u.s uh we spell it h-e-m i'm not going to try to guess how to spell this but <laughs> it's spelled h-e-m but in the the uk it's spelled h-a-e-m right like that's like just a completely different variation so ai through its knowledge can start to understand the content and start saying oh wait Hemorrhagic here has a very close relation, a semantically similar relationship. So when somebody's searching for this content, I might want to actually include these other variations to it. And so we're starting to see through uh, things such as Bing, uh, who is constantly growing a huge amount of knowledge on you know, what's happening in the web, but people are searching through and starting to leverage that knowledge. Now, all of a sudden we can start looking at an organization's content extract out more meaning, extract out more knowledge, and then provide yet a much more advanced search experience. So I think that's where it really fits in with your solution, where if we can start letting people um, explore or see more knowledge from that, I think that really advances the solution. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what I, what I hear you both saying is basically that uh, all those enterprises have their databases, they're all siloed, uh, getting all this structured and unstructured data uh, together, mingle it around uh, to make sure that you can use AI and machine learning on top of it to uh, basically get the, 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 the content understanding out of all this information. I think that is uh, the, the crucial thing in, in uh, to get that, uh, yeah, uh, that thing uh, tackled basically. So I think also accessibility and analysis uh, uh, is, I think, paramount important to get the right information to the right people at the right time. Uh, so Liam, can you tell me also a little bit more about the plans, how Microsoft uh, basically relate to those two topics? So yeah, so basically, um, and, and I'm sorry, can you just repeat so like from the accessibility perspective? Yeah, accessibility and analysis uh, on those two topics. Uh. 
Yeah, absolutely. So when we, we, we look at that, what we try to do is we try to see if we can actually extract out the most relevant information from that so that as people are actually searching it, there's different ways that they can interact with it. Like sometimes it's using speech. You know, if I'm actually um, looking for information, more, more of a voice interaction. Sometimes it's more of a case where it's a chatbot. You know, sometimes when people are interacting, they want to be able to say, I want to go in and start typing and asking questions to it. So from an accessibility perspective, what we're seeing is that it's not always just a search box. Sometimes there's other types of ways that people might want to interact with it. And so I think as we progress, that's that's changing. Sometimes it could even be, you know, I'm taking a picture and I want to find things that are similar. So interaction patterns are very critical and, and that I think really helps the accessibility. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, and from your experience, Mama, uh, can you tell a bit more about it? How do you see it? How do you interact with, with customers with that one? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think one of the important things, and Liam mentioned that earlier as well with the more semantic analysis of text, is that we're moving a bit away from the really tech only technical users of search system that know exactly what metadata is contained in the index everywhere, what they can search for, and more towards a natural language perspective on everyone has to be able to use this at least on a functional level so they have access to their information. What we try to do with Digital Next Search is try to sort of standardize the analysis of documents by all of the knowledge that's within all the senior employees. We want to transfer that and transform it into a skill set that does this for everyone. So everyone that opens this document will have this representation of knowledge that we extracted from it, that we learned how to extract this from all the senior employees and everyone will have this base analysis. So from an accessibility perspective, that's what we want to achieve. We want to make sure that this knowledge is ends up there, not just in, in individual heads. And what's also important is that um, all of the data we extract, we make it independently available. So it's not just locked away within the search engine. Azure Search has this mechanism called a knowledge store where we can define a complex scheme where everything that's in the index, we can export it, we can make it independently available. People can analyze it, can use it to drive other parts of their business. We can make new models of functionality on top of it that feed back into the search engine. So it will not just benefit the search use case. It can be much broader than that. Make this information accessible across the company. Got it, got it. So finding basically the right information for the right people uh, yeah. is, is a huge benefit, I think, for everybody. It saves time. Uh, uh, it also poss possibly also saves a lot of liabilities in some cases, I, 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 can, I can assume. But uh, how likely? Uh, can we make it basically one step uh, further? Like uh, uh, how likely can we, with the technology available as of today, uh, ask questions to the data? And provide answers to those. Uh, 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 provide those answers. Uh, so, uh, basically, what we all, everybody is doing uh, uh, on, on, when they are on the web, like uh, the how to, uh, how do I, or how to uh, make make this or make that. Uh, so, how do you see this, uh, Liam? Is Microsoft planning to do something like that, uh, asking questions to the data and provide those answers back? Yeah, in a semantic way, let's say. <laughs> that, you're absolutely right, and it's it, it's an interesting trend. Like if we if we think even five years back, when you went to Google or Bing and you you typed a, a search, right, you would get a list of documents that came back that match your queries, what you were looking for. But as we've seen, you know, more recently, um, they're starting to be able the concept of understanding the intent. So you know who who um, founded Microsoft, right? It's more of a question. I want to, I know somewhere on the web, somewhere in the internet, there's an answer to it. I don't want to see a million hits. I want to actually get the answer to what I'm looking for. And so we've also seen that because when organizations uh, have their vast amount of content, they also have users. Sometimes I'm doing research and sometimes I do want a set of uh, results, set of documents that match it. But in other cases, I'm just looking to get an answer to my question. I know it's somewhere in those documents, but I don't know where. Yeah. So 
that is exactly what we have been enabling uh, within Cognitive Search as well. So that when users are searching, what we can do is we can start to do more from the intent perspective. We can say, oh, this is a question. So maybe at the top of the result in, in the Digital Next uh, solution, maybe what you do is you actually provide a potential answer that we might provide to you that we found in that organization content. Maybe below that, then you also show some document summaries if they actually want to see additional information. But actually integrating that all together, I think really extends because everybody is going to have a different purpose. I might be just finding an answer. I might be doing research. Sometimes I just want to explore the data and you need to be able to accommodate those incredible numbers of variances to what users are trying to achieve. Yes. Yeah. Anything to add for you, which I uh, Mana? How do you see this? Yeah, I agree pretty much with Liam. I think this uh, is a compounded challenge in the sense that someone wants the type of information. We first have to find, okay, where can we find this information? What are the top hits that should contain this? And then we indeed have to understand the intent behind what exactly do they want to know within this large document or this record. And yeah, then we try to answer the question. This is, this is indeed a tricky thing and semantic developments will absolutely help with that. So yeah, what we try within search solutions is first and foremost, get the right results up there, get the representation of what's inside these documents up front to users. So sometimes reading the document is redundant, perhaps so within the extracted metadata, they already have their answer. They can draw a conclusion from that. But yeah, actually providing that answer in a structured way, very interesting and also very challenging. Great, right, right. especially within uh, domains, yeah. <laughs> so many domains. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So uh, uh, I would like to provide also the possibility to share uh, uh, to additional information in the notes of this podcast. So uh, uh, I would love to uh, ask you, uh, Liam, uh, where would you be, uh, want to, people to learn uh, more about Azure Cognitive Search? Yeah, well, certainly we have a fair amount of content and, you know, a good place to start is our Azure Search documentation and hopefully we can include a, a link to that. There are lots of videos, tutorials, samples, uh, information, more, a lot more details on the types of scenarios, including some of the things that we're looking to do from the semantic search perspective that I think people would be interested in. But I think most important, I think that hopefully people are, are taking this and thinking, you know, it's not just about just search and I put in a search box and I see results, you know, start to think more about what you can do with that data. If all of a sudden I can, do question and answers, if I can do more of a visual exploration of what's in my data, or as we're talking about this knowledge, using all of this knowledge that we're extracting, this great metadata that we're extracting, can I do more with it? Could I use Power BI? Could I use some other analytics tools to then do more research that's not just necessarily search? And I, I think that is amazing. And if people start thinking about those things and how that can open up with their data, I think that would be a great to follow up as well. Very good. And from your side, uh, Mana, where could uh, people find more information about Digital Next Search and possible references? Yeah, on the Orange Next website, we have a section for Digital Next Search specifically. And there's some blog posts there regarding different real world use cases we've come across, how we tackle them with uh, cognitive search, which challenges we face there, how we solve them, and also a very interesting case study with, from an implementation we did at the customer with the Royal IHC. They tell their own story and how it helped them, so it should offer people some good perspective. Very good. So my final question to wrap up uh, to you both basically is uh, for the for the potential customers that, that are watching at the moment uh, to this podcast. Uh, what do you want them to take away from this podcast? Uh, yeah. Can you can you elaborate on, on that one, uh, Liam? So what do they really need to remember? Yeah. So I I, I think that I'll, I'll reiterate what I was just going through, which is like the whole idea of opening up your data. Think of all those data sources that you have sitting in databases, sitting in SharePoint, sitting in file systems that may not be really doing much. Maybe there's individual users that know about them and individually use them, but what could you do if you as an organization could open that up so it's not just a silo, it's open and available to lots of people. And not only is it accessible to those people, 
but if they could actually really make use of that knowledge deep in within it. And I think that's that's what I really hope people start thinking about. Are you, Mana? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I, I hope people take away from this some inspiration regarding the possibilities, the things we can do with search, all the extra functionality we can add on top of search and how it could help them or how they could help themselves. Very good. So uh, this was a great conversation, guys. So uh, th thanks a lot for being here uh, and taking the time, of course, to teach us, but also the, the, the listeners and the viewers uh, to this podcast. So Liam, uh, grateful to have you on the show uh, today. Uh, and Mana, also many thanks for, for being here and uh, also sharing your expertise and also your, uh, your knowledge uh, in, this, in this case. Thank you everybody for, uh, for the time and the attention. Uh, I certainly appreciate all of you listening. You can learn more on the podcast that will be broadcasted, that will be on our website. On behalf of Liam, Mana and myself, Thank you and see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Orange Next podcast series. 